Hey there, friends. This is Pastor Nate, and I am so glad that you could be here on Fan Night this Wednesday night. I tell you what, I believe that God has a real treat in store for us this evening, and I am so excited to see what he has in store. Uh, but just real quickly, I want to bring uh, four quick announcements to you. The first thing is this, that as you're watching this, if you would just interact with us and put your name there at the bottom, we would love to know that you were here and that you were participating in our fam night on this special evening. And so interact with us on our either our YouTube uh, video or on the Facebook post. We would greatly appreciate that. Uh, the second thing is don't forget about our church website. That website can be found at ROS, the number one, NAS.net. That's ROS, the number one, NAS.net. Uh, there, there you can find all kinds of updates as to what's coming up and what's going on for Roswell First Church of the Nazarene. Uh, there are some good things there, and there are some new things that are posted on the church website. So you want to go make sure that you check it out. The third thing that you want to remember, too, is if you have any prayer needs or any needs for assistance, if you could contact us at the church office or through the church website and let us know, we want to have the opportunity to pray with you and to do what we can to meet whatever your needs are. So if you need to give us a call, we would encourage you to call 575-624-2614. That's 575-624-2614. And, and leave a message if you could, or if you can reach somebody, let them know how we can pray for you. And also you can communicate to us through the church website. There's a tab called Prayer Needs and Assistance. And so if you want to go there and you can fill out that form through the church website, that sends us uh, that prayer request immediately or that need for assistance. So we would appreciate if you commun communicate with us what we can do to love you and to serve you. And then lastly, uh, I just want to say thank you for being so uh, good about sending in your tithes and your offerings. God has been so generous to us, and I believe he's going to continue to be generous to us. And so we need to be generous to him and be obedient to him. So I want to encourage you to continue to be generous to him. And so you can turn those tithes in to the church via sending them through the, U uh, the mail, uh, the USPS, or you can send them through Tithely on our church website, and we will can receive them there. I tell you what, God is so good, and we love him, and we're so glad you could be with us. Before we get started with everything, though, Let's just bow our heads quickly in a word of prayer. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for being here with us. Even though it's sometimes really challenging, we think about this COVID stuff and sometimes it can be stressful, but Lord Jesus, we're grateful that you are present with us, that you are right here with us and that we can sense your holy presence. And Lord, we're, we're thankful for that. And we just pray that you would just pour out your blessings upon those who worked so hard this evening to put this all together. We're grateful for their, their hard work and, and their, their creativity. We're thankful for your work in their heart and in their life. And so we just pray, God, that you would pour out your blessings on this evening's uh, lesson and activity and that your name would be praised. Uh, Lord, we love you and we lift all these things up in Jesus' precious name. And all God's people said, amen. You have a blessed evening this evening. Hi, it's Pastor Janice. I have some really surprising puzzles for you today. Let's see how smart you can be. Hope you have a good time doing them. Bye.
asked to do a testimony so here goes it started in April 23rd 1952 in a very small house on Vineyard Road in Midway New Mexico my mother was rushed to St. Mary's Hospital which is now the county building here in Roswell New Mexico God was going to bless me with life I was raised in that small house until the age of about three or four when my family loaded up a 49 Ford pickup and we set off for Wilmington, California with five of us in the cab. We later moved to Santa Ana, California. During this time, I kind of got in trouble and uh, took some cigarettes to the school and was smoking them behind one of the classrooms. This was in elementary school. This is one of two times that I got in trouble for smoking on school grounds. The second time was when I was caught smoking in uh, junior high. I was walking across the senior high uh, 
parking lot and, and I was caught with a cigarette in my hand. Um, our family started attending the um, Greenville Country Church, I remember, in Santa Ana. And there we met the Dady family. Estella Dady Harris was my Sunday school teacher, and she was my first introduction to Jesus Christ. I graduated from Santa Ana Valley High School in June of 1970. In October of 1970, I was inducted into the United States Navy and was sent to RTC, NTC, San Diego for basic training. I kind of followed my dad's lead while in the Navy and um, I would head off towards the enlisted men's club or into a local bar and uh, kind of leave Jesus behind. Well, Jesus had different thoughts for me and different plans. He would lead me to places like the Christian Servicemen Center in Civic Bay, the Philippines, or he'd lead me to a Bible study in Manila. Um, being an aviation storekeeper, supply person, I didn't have a lot of time to go to, to church or to chapel while I, so when I finished out my career in the Navy, I uh, prayed and told God that I would keep the Sabbath, um, keep it holy, and not work another Sunday ever again. I went to Skagit Valley College and earned my technical arts degree in automotive technology, and I uh, later went to work for the uh, auto hobby shop on base at Whid Whidbey Island Naval Air Station. I worked there for about three years without working any Sundays, and uh, then the word came down that, that they were going to be start closing on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and that I would have to start working Sundays. I told my bo boss that I would have to go looking for another job because when I was hired on, I told I made the stipulation that I couldn't work Sundays. So I prayed to God that and said that I had made him a promise and that if it was his will that I keep that promise, he would have to open up a door to another job where I would not work Sundays. I put in several applications uh, to auto parts stores, to auto dealerships, but one of the applications I kind of procrastinated on, and it was the one to Napa Auto Parts store in Oak Harbor, Washington. When I put it in, Doyle Osborne, a God-loving man, told me that the same day that he, I put in my application, one of his uh, employees had decided he was going to go back to college and uh, was going to quit. I never worked a Sunday because Napa Auto Parts was never open on Sundays. During that time, we attended Oak Harbor Church of the Nazarene. And while I was there, the Lord was talking to me about my cigarette smoking. He said, what kind of a witness did I think I was while I was doing, while I was smoking? And I really had trouble quitting. I was hanging on to that one cigarette a day and, uh, I told God that if I couldn't quit on my own, so that he was going to have to make me quit. The very next cigarette that I smoked, I thought my chest and lungs were going to totally capsulate inside my body. I mean, I was in trouble. I threw down that cigarette and smashed it out 
and threw away the pack, and that was my last cigarette on February 12, 1996. Ron and I retired in December 2011, so we sold our house and headed out looking for some sun and tried getting close to our youngest granddaughter who lives in Texas. We uh, looked at different places. We, we looked at uh, Oklahoma and thought, eh, too many tornadoes up there. We also looked at Clayton, New Mexico, and we, re we got here during the winter, so we realized that that was probably not the right place to go to end up either. So we just kept coming uh, south, and we went through Albuquerque and, and uh, said, no, nah, too big a city for us. So we kept coming. I said, hey, let's go down to Roswell so I can see where I was born. So we came down to Roswell, and and we were just kind of hanging out here for a little bit. We were staying at the Trailer Village RV Park, and uh, then the, we had to move out of there, and we moved to um, Town and Country RV Park. Uh, so... We found a house while we was while we was here. We kind of went looking for looking at what kind of houses they had. We found a house here in the Enchanted Hills, and started attending Roswell First Church. I know that God is still working on me. I'm not where He wants me yet, but I'm not the same person who walked into the door of Roswell First almost six years ago either. I just praise him for what he's doing in my life, and I praise him for the work that I get to do around the church, and I just love him, and I just praise him for even how he's working with us during this time of having to stay inside and stay home. It's okay because... I've had more time to really think about him and and looking more towards him. So I just praise him and thank him. And uh, that's the end of my testimony. Thank you.